Hey everyone, it's Cole from A Plus Power Sports. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a quick once over on this Ranger 500. So if you're watching this video, hopefully that means you just purchased your very own brand new Ranger 500. The biggest thing with any new machine is going to be uh, being nice to it during the break-in period. So on the Ranger 500s, we have a 25 hour break-in. Um, on our screen, it has a countdown timer. So when that 25 hours times out, the double zeros will show and a little wrench will start flashing for you. That means you need to bring it into your dealership for the first service where they go through everything, change the engine oil, get the true PS4 Polaris oil into it and do a really good inspection to make sure there's no issues from the manufacturer. During the first 25 hours, we want you to be very easy on the machine. Um, so that doesn't mean you can go full throttle. I don't recommend that. The slower you go, I say zero to 50% throttle is gonna be your best break-in. Don't let it sit in idle for a long time. We want the piston and rings to really seat to the cylinder. If you are nicer to this machine during the first 25 hours of break-in, it's going to give you less issues later on down the road and just have a lot longer of a lifespan. So keeping good fuel in it, I'm gonna recommend premium fuel in this vehicle. Um, if you have to run 87, it will handle it, but it likes the 91 premium. Ethanol is really the killer on these. So if you're able to get fuel without ethanol, that's what we're always gonna try and get into these Rangers. Um, ethanol is just kind of a nasty material that gets into our rubber hoses for our fuel lines and starts to break things down over the long term of the vehicle. During the first break-in, we want to, or the first tank of fuel really is when you should be the nicest to the vehicle. So slower riding, lots of different variations in RPMs, using low gear when you should um, is a big thing with this. We'll go over that in a second here, but um, just be really easy on the machine breaking it in and you're gonna have a long, happy life with it. All right, so some maintenance items on your Ranger 500s. Um, the biggest one being oil changes. Your dipstick is over on this side and it is a screw style. So you have to screw it all the way in and screw it all the way back out to get a true reading. You can't just dip it in. Um, the screws actually take up part of, or the threads take up part of our oil dipstick there. When you drain your engine oil and you're gonna go fill it back up, uh, you fill it right through this cap here. So we want all the oil to run down from the top of the engine all the way down to the bottom with fresh, clean oil. Your air filter and air box is right here. You have a couple different clips that you'll pull. There's just two on the front here and the lid will just pull up and back. Keep a Polaris stock air filter in it. These really are the best for the maintenance side of it. The Polaris air filters do not allow too much dirt and air to get into the engine, which obviously will cause issues. Sometimes some of the aftermarket um, race filters, they'll call them. Yes, they do um, allow more air to go through, but in the conditions these ride in, that also means a lot more dirt. Um, so a lot of times I'll see vehicles come in with the front side of the piston just worn completely off because it, the dirt that it sucked through from having an aftermarket air filter. So keep the players ones in there and change them regularly. Every time you change the engine oil, definitely should be changing an air filter or at least inspecting and cleaning it. Sometimes if it's really dusty conditions, especially up north in the summertime when it hasn't rained in a while, you might have to change your air filter out every weekend that you're out there riding. Just really depends on condition. It's not like your car. We're on the road and there's no dust or dirt. It's very clean for a car. These are in some nasty um, riding conditions. Over on this side, you can get to your spark plug easily right there. Um, and with this dump box, you can pull this pin and then pull the pin out of here actually and this dump bed can fold all the way up which allows you to easily get underneath the bed and maintenance your, your Ranger. So all Rangers run a centrifugal driven clutch. So you have your primary clutch in the front and your secondary clutch in the rear. The primary is attached to the engine and so it's spinning all the time. Now this has to breathe so it has an air intake and an air outlet. Um, that allows cool air to come through here. And the clutch spins so fast when the engine is running that it actually makes a, a vacuum and it pulls air in and then pushes it back out the exhaust on the outside here. If you somehow ever got water in there, um, if you went too deep or sometimes the puddles splashing up will get water in here or there's a rubber gasket. If you're getting water inside your clutches, maybe you should start with changing your rubber gasket. Um, this is very rare, but if you do get water in it, your belt will not be able to move because the water acts as a lubricant and there's no more friction for that belt to ride on the clutch. So let's say you get water in there, you're stuck, you can't get out. Get onto some dry land, uh, take a flathead screwdriver and pull this little red drain plug out. Keep the engine running. With the engine running, it's making so much of a vacuum, it's gonna push that water out of there, which will dry out the clutches. 
and you'll be able to take off and go again. All right, to get to our battery and fuse panel, we lift up the, the front seat here. You're able to lift this up out of its pivot point if you want the seat to be fully removed. Um, but our battery is right down in the bottom, super easy to get to and to maintain. Um, our fuse panel is right on the side there. So if you pull the little lid off, there's a rubber gasket to keep water and dust out of it. But on the top lid, you will see what each fuse is for right there. So if you have issues with a machine popping a fuse or headlights not working, make sure we always start with checking the fuse before we just dig into big repairs. All right, up in our driver's seat here, we have a tilt steering wheel, so you can adjust your steering wheel on how you would like it. Um, our gear shifter is right here, along with our display screen. So you'll see our miles per hour up at the top. With the key on, you can click this little black button to scroll through the different settings, step at, such as trip one, trip two, and RPMs. Um, your clock is down there. Refer to the owner's manual if you have more questions about that. There's tons of features this little gauge actually can do. When you want to turn your headlights on, you'll have the engine started. You'll turn your key back one click. There's only high beams on the range of 500. Um, but turn those on when you're trail riding or even driving around the yard at night, and the high beams actually do a really good job. Our four wheel drive, different drive modes here. All the way down to the bottom is turf mode, we call it for Polaris. That's just one wheel spin. It's gonna pick whatever tire in the rear spins the easiest, and that's gonna be your driving wheel. Uh, the middle mode switch here is true posi, so you lock that in. Both rear tires are going to be pushing. So most of the time, that's going to be used for trail riding or for towing a trailer. You're going to want to be in posi. Um, Four-wheel drive is true four-wheel drive. You have to let off the gas. You don't have to come to a complete stop, but you have to slow down to a roll. It has to be under a certain RPM range for it to actually engage the four-wheel drive system. But being true four-wheel drive, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to steer. But this is for muddy conditions. If you're stuck in two by, in two by four, click it up into four by four and you'll be able to crawl right out of it easily. The biggest thing most people will be using is going to be a turf mode. So that's for your most yard work, even just maybe road riding if that's legal in your area. Um, just keep that one wheel spin on and it's easiest to steer and get around corners. Now our shifter, selecting a gear is a really big thing with this obviously. Being a clutch and belt driven system, we want to use low gear. So we'll go all the way up to low gear here. That's your second one from the top. If you're going to be towing anything or going under 10 miles an hour for a long time, low gear should be used. So yeah, even driving around your yard, if you're just going from here to the end of the driveway to get to the mailbox maybe, use low gear. It likes those higher RPMs and towing anything or if you're stuck in the mud. Low gear is actually used a lot more than most people think it is, but if you're in low gear when you should be, you're not gonna have issues with slipping belts or burning them. Um, high gear, all the way up. This is where you get your speed out of the vehicle. When you're in high gear, these ones will get up to about 50 miles an hour, so you'll get cruising pretty fast. Um, but this is for trail riding, no load on the rear, just you and a passenger in the cab going down the trail. Then two down, you have neutral, reverse and park. Something that I've noticed with the player's transmissions, if you go all the way down to park and then just one up to reverse, that's gonna be the easiest way to get into reverse compared to going from high to reverse. Always try to go all the way down and then just one up. All right, with the front hood open, we have two bungee straps to open it on the side here. Um, but the most important things we're going to be getting to under here is going to be a, a coolant overflow bottle. So, or coolant reservoir, I should say. There's two lines, there's a uh, check this when it's cold. So let the engine sit for about 20 minutes. That coolant is going to work its way back through the engine and the cooling system. It'll fill this up and give you an accurate reading. So don't do this when it's hot out on the trail. Otherwise, this is always going to be fluctuating. Um, but keep it between the two lines. There's a high and a low line. You want your coolant right at the top or at least somewhere in the middle. This is our player's bus bar right here. So if we're gonna do radios, light bars, um, winches, different things like that, you'll always be connecting them right to the player's bus bar compared to running wires all the way to the battery. So that's a really nice feature Polaris has. Um, wiring any electrical accessory up is very fast and simple. Adjusting your suspension, on the Ranger 500s you have an adjustment on the front spring and the rear spring. They both look very similar to each other, um, but when should you adjust them and how to do it is pretty important with this. So, 
If you put a snow plow on the front of this machine, you're going to want to crank these springs up about two clicks. So these little ridges here, this is your keeper area. If you have the spanner wrench, which comes in your tool kit right from the factory, you can get some weight off the machine and put it on here and twist this. And we're gonna to wanna to get it down one, maybe even two, which is gonna be on the higher setting, um, depending on how heavy the plow is. But we don't want this front suspension to be sagging like this. If you have a plow on the front, it makes it very difficult to steer and puts a lot more stress on your front suspension components. The rear is doing the same thing. So the rear is usually where people will have to adjust it the most. If you're pulling trailers a lot or loading the bed up with a lot of materials to haul around, crank up those rear suspensions and you can keep them there. It will ride a little bit more rough if you don't have any load on it. So Polaris leaves them from the factory at the lowest setting. This is gonna be your best setting for most trail riders. All right, I'm always gonna recommend that you guys wear a seatbelt, of course, for the driver and passenger, but what these vehicles have built into them is a little bit of a governor. So if you don't have your driver's side seatbelt clipped in, this machine's only gonna go about 15 miles an hour. So if you get at home, and you're like, why the heck is my Ranger only going 15 miles an hour even in high gear? Put your seatbelt on and you'll go a lot faster then. The biggest thing with any of these during break-in is being nice to them. Read your owner's manual if you have any questions, but you're gonna have a long, happy life with these Rangers if you're nice to them during that first break-in. If you have any questions about this machine, leave a comment in the section below. If you wanna see my current inventory that I have in stock right now, check out aplusride.com. If you guys liked the video, hit the like and subscribe button, and thanks for watching.